Gilmore. I mean, it really is sort of like a stealth brave and the bold with, uh, you know, with, with Superman and Batman headlining. Okay, I know that you are here because you saw the thumbnail and you saw the post and you know the absolute genius that I am being joined by today. We have a god of comic books joining us. The person who, for me, defined a lot of my comic book reading career. He is now orchestrating so much and the more that's revealed over at DC, I can see how long he's been seeding all of this fun stuff. We have the one, the only, the great, Mark Wade joining us today. Hi, Mark. Good, good morning. God. How are you doing this morning? Good. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I want you to follow me around all day long and say things like that. So, honestly, I would be happy to. Are you going to Emerald City Comic Con? <laughs> Sadly, I will not be there, but it's a great show. I love that show. All right. Well, the next con you're at, let me know. I'll be we'll, there. Okay. We'll do. Uh, fun fact, my very first job in the United States was working at a comic book store that no longer exists called Blast Off Comics, and you were the oh, yeah. first comic creator I ever met there. <laughs> That's right. And Blast Off was a good was a good store. And I yes. Like, yes. In the before times. times. So this yeah. is a reunion of sorts. sorts. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna see what everyone is saying. Graham says there's a nice Superman print behind Mark's shoulder. Mark, what's going on with the print? It's actually a reproduction of this 1940s painting that DC had in its offices uh, back in the day. This gigantic Superman painting uh, by a guy named H.J. Ward, who was a big pulp magazine illustrator. Yes. So it's one of the prized possessions. It's one of the things that if the place catches on fire, that's coming out with me. Oh, nice. <laughs> when, you, uh, when you live in a place that is prone to fires, you know what comics are you're yeah, taking. Yeah, they do. Mike Armstrong also says, Mark Wade, and Jeremy says, Mark rocks. So yeah. you have a lot of support here, but let's get into it because I don't have you for very, very long. Okay. So I want to ask, because you have written a ton of solo characters. Thank you for Impulse. Uh, you've written a lot of team books, but what is different with World's Finest when you're dealing with a team up and specifically the dynamic between only two characters? It's a little trickier because the power disparity is so huge between Superman and Batman that- yeah. Coming up with something and a, and a menace and a threat that can involve both of them is a little tricky, but that's part of the fun of it. The real fun of it, though, is not just Superman and Batman. It's being able to bring in all the other elements of the DC Universe, from Robin and Supergirl to Metamorpho to Flash to, you know, guest stars galore. I mean, it really is sort of like a stealth brave and the bold with, uh, you know, with, with Superman and Batman headlining. I have to say, because I'm a diehard Robin fan, I love every time he shows up, he's like, and Robin, I'm here too. So thank yeah. you for giving him his due. <laughs> it's interesting. He, I, I look back on a lot of the more recent Batman Superman runs and all of them were really good. But I think that that was an X factor that was missing that I realized once you make Robin a co-star of the book mm -hmm. and equally as important as the other two, the dynamics just change and he is so much fun to write. Was there always, because when you read the first issue, there's a very chilly introduction to Robin and Supergirl and their friendship and their relationship. So all the way back when you were writing issue one, did you know that what happens in issue 12 with the date was going no, to happen? I had no idea. I just assumed <laughs> that when Supergirl and Robin met, they would, one of them would be all over the other one. But then I thought that's predictable. That's very predictable that, that Robin would be the horn dog in the, in the equation or whatever let's do something interesting. And so it occurred to me, it's more interesting if Superman and Batman are best friends, Robin and Supergirl just can't stand each other. So all of the stuff I threw in about their date in issue two, all the horrible things that happened, that was just me in the moment. So mm. writing issue 12 then was a, a masterclass in trying to figure out how all these pieces that I just threw out there 10 months earlier fit together. So you've been on this book. We have 12 issues so far, 13 is coming out. Did you know from Jump that you were going to be integrating Lazarus Planet into World's Finest storylines? Because reading them both, there's a lot of Easter eggs early on in World's Finest. Some of that stuff is is retro planted. I mm -hmm. We didn't know from Jump that it was going to be integrated with Lazarus Planet. But as we went, and I was paying attention to what Gene Yang was doing over in Monkey Prince, and I was yeah. to you know, the Lazarus stuff that uh, J Josh Williamson was doing over in Robin, it all made sense to, for it to all come together. And it's important for me that the world's finest book, even though it's set a few years back, have some connection to what's going on in the DC universe now. 
Uh, so that's, it just fit in beautifully and it worked out really well. I really love Jawin's question. So I popped it up here. So Mark, what are the kooky or silly or bonkers Silver Age DC covers that you really liked? Because you do bring a Silver Age flair of fun to World's Finest. I, be careful with that F word. That's that's the, that's the doom in comics. Right? <laughs> Someone on Twitter is going to drag you. <laughs> it seems like, oh, he's oh fun. We don't want fun in our comics. Um <laughs> That God, there are so many. When you ask that question, my mind floods with a hundred thousand covers. <clears throat> there are just, I. We'll come back to that. We'll, okay, Jolin, we'll come back to that. I'll be we'll thinking of that. Back to okay. <laughs> okay. Speaking of, dare I say again, fun and bright and the art. You're collaborating with Dan Mora on World's yeah. Finest, who is the internet's favorite artist right now. What is your collaboration like? It's it's terrific. I mean, he's he's funny he's sharp he can tell a story which is not always the case with artists um and he's just joyous to work with he's interested in, in drawing anything like mm -hmm. there's nothing i can throw at him and sometimes you'll you know with an artist you'll write uh, here's kind of where the neat scene needs to be set but i'm i'm really sorry that it's in a baseball stadium or whatever he didn't care he's he'll whatever whatever he hasn't drawn yet he's willing to draw He's just that's a really, so yeah. That's a great nugget that I don't know if everyone knows that sometimes collaborating with artists, they'll say like, I don't want to draw horses or I don't want to draw baseball games. Right. Or at least, you know, I don't, I, if I can help it, I'd really rather not draw a circus tent. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the circus issue, by the way, is chef's kiss. Thank it's you. So great. I really loved it. Okay. We talked about fun. For anyone who's not here for fun, we'll get into some of the darker, the edgier, the cooler stuff, I guess. So I teased a little bit about you seeding Lazarus Planet in World's Finest. There's also seeds for Lazarus Planet in Batman versus Robin. So what was the origin point for that storyline? That storyline was originally conceived a couple of years ago, actually, as wow. building out of what Josh was planning on doing early mm -hmm. on in his Robin run. And as we got closer to wanting to launch it, and we realized that Lazarus Planet could be something that fed into it, that's when it all started to come together. So it's it's been kicking around for a while, and the Lazarus Planet piece of it mm -hmm. really threw it into high gear and really made it something that was not just Batman versus Robin, but Batman and Robin and the whole DC Universe. So we have the word gene bomb. There's a lot of things that seem to tie back to the 80s. So did you read Invasion before you came on to Lazarus I was, Planet? Was the, I was the the assistant editor on Invasion. Yes. I know. <laughs> so were you was it always intended to revisit those types of themes? Or do they just live in your brain rent free? It really was it, it kind of lives in the ring, brain rent free. It really wasn't. I mean, honestly, until you mentioned it just now, I did not made that connection. Oh, well, I'm going to credit uh, Graham McMillan, who's in the chat, because he's the one who put me on to that. And okay. I was like, oh, you're right. And I'm a recent reader of Invasion, so it really was fresh for me, and it felt like it was fresh for you as well. <laughs> I would also love to know, what's the difference between writing for Dick Grayson and writing for Damian Wayne? Because they are the Robins on both ends of the spectrum. They both anchor World's Finest and Lazarus Planet in huge ways. So how do you find writing them that's different or maybe similar? It's, hmm, similar is hard. Uh, that's, the the differences are, are legion. Um, I mean, one has no sense of humor. One is all about a sense of humor. You know, Dick is all about performing, mm -hmm. you know, showcasing. I, I That idea in Batman versus Robin 3 where he talks about how you know, he, he misses the spotlight and, mm -hmm. and, and it, 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 it's weird to him that he suddenly was able to, you know, he used to be the center of attention in the circus tent and now he's Robin and he's behind a mask and he can't enjoy that attention, which again was all super buried low in, in Dick Grayson's psyche and it was all amplified by the magic as a, as a, into a grief. But that was a revelation to me as I wrote that and I, I hadn't thought about that before. So Dick is all about really enjoying the applause not mm -hmm. to a point where it gets in his way not to a point where he's a jerk but just he likes being a showman damien is exactly the i, I think if damien could be invisible 24 7 <laughs> that would operate <laughs> i think that i think that would be like his best version would yeah. not be going to disneyland it would be nobody can see him and thus yeah. he can do whatever he wants do whatever he wants yeah 
<laughs> Graham says, I love invasion. I'm also old. You know, yeah, invasion, what? Yes. invasion is 33 years old. Yes. <laughs> Look, the Arrowverse brought it back into the modern That's discussion, true. though. It's still incredibly, incredibly relevant. Okay. Tom Trainer says, any chance of the Flash showing up in World Finest, even if we it were Barry seeing Mark have any connection? So, Mark. Are we getting oh, Flash? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> issue, issue, fifty, maybe fifteen, certainly sixteen and seventeen. Uh, you'll be seeing Flash along with a bunch of other DC characters. I mean, again, it's just like I said, it's really just a massive team up book. We're just selling it under the name Batman and Superman. I know in the true history of World's Finest. Okay. Yeah. The last thing I want to ask you before I let you go, because you've already blown my mind with everything we've talked about today. Yesterday, Night Terrors was announced from DC. So I can't let you go without asking, are you involved? What can you tease? How are these storylines going to cross over? I know, I know the DC snipers, they could come for us at any time. But can you right. tell us anything about your involvement? I wish I could. I am involved. <laughs> I am involved, not in any sort of mastermind cap cap capacity, but there are there is work I will be doing on it along with so many other writers, but it, it sounds like a really cool event. I was asked if I wanted to participate and I didn't hesitate. I thought it was a really good idea. I feel like for a minute there, you almost want to turn to Damian Wayne and be like, I will not tell you anything, tell you anything. No. about that. Terrors. <laughs> Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for gracing us with your genius. Can you let everybody know where they can follow you online to share more of their effusive compliments? Sure. It's uh, it's a uh, Wade Mark on Instagram. I'm, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter, but it's as Mark Wade, but I never, I never go because it's just, it's Twitter. Um, so don't look for me there. Uh, <laughs> And before I let you go, I'm going to encourage the previous caller to look at Superman 170 for a goofy ass Silk Rage Superman cover. There you Superman go. Superman 170, go there. Somebody tweet that out right now. Yeah. Like All that. right. Yeah. Thank you again, Mark. Have a wonderful yeah. day. Stay you safe. Too. Stay warm. All right. Bye. Take care.